China is one of the most influential countries on the planet. It's full of rich history, and you know what that means. Some of its towns are full of dark tales, and today I'm here to share some of them with you. So let's jump right in. We're starting off the list with the Forbidden City. So this huge palace complex is often said to be a must-see if you're visiting Beijing, but it's also known to be one of the most haunted areas of the city, and possibly in all of China. The Forbidden City was built between 1406 and 1420. It's a massive complex that served as the imperial palace for 24 emperors across the Ming and Qing dynasties. Ordinary people were strictly forbidden from entering, but the thing was, once inside, departure was not permitted. It's a pretty spectacular looking place, but its history is pretty dark as well. The Yungla Emperor who first lived there was quite the guy. He had this huge harem of ladies, but when important visitors came around, he decided that he had to get rid of them. So one night in 1421, he ordered thousands of people from his harem to be killed, and it was not subtle. The story goes that it was about as brutal as it gets, with people literally being torn apart. The entire palace was stained red. Lady Sui, one of his favorite women, kept a diary that talked about these killings, and when Yongla died, she and some other women were hanged. It was apparently Yongla's dying wish. The place is believed to be haunted and cursed. Emperor Yongla's own son, Hong Shi, wanted to move the court somewhere else, but he suddenly died less than a year later. And visitors now say there's a dark lingering energy in the Forbidden City. Some will say they have this overwhelming feeling of sadness or uneasiness. And people have said to see ghosts, like the White Lady, for example, a tormented spirit constantly on the run from a ghostly soldier attempting to kill her. Some say they've also heard the eerie sounds of phantom scream and swords clashing in the night. Next on the list, we have Fengdu Ghost City, which sits along the Yangtze River. This place has a chilling history that spans over two millennia. So legend has it that during the Eastern Han Dynasty, two imperial officials, Ying Shansheng and Wang Fanping, were seeking immortality through Taoist practices on top of the nearby Ming Mountain. Their combined names ominously translated to the King of Hell, as they allegedly dragged unsuspecting villagers into the underworld. Now today, the area is said to have a bit of an eerie atmosphere. It's full of temples and shrines devoted to the afterlife, paintings and sculptures in the temples depict scenes of souls undergoing torment for their earthly sins. But the place looks absolutely spectacular, from images I've seen online anyway. I mean, just look at this. Looks like something straight out of a fantasy movie. We just don't have anything like this over here in Canada or the US. Uh, yeah, definitely adding this to my bucket list. Next, we have the Chiu Mansion in Shanghai. Now, you can't really call Shanghai a small town, I know, but uh, I couldn't help it. I had to talk about this place. Talking about your standard hauntings all the time gets a little too samey-samey, but this old abandoned mansion is said to be haunted by the spirits of exotic animals and they don't play around like human ghosts do. These animal ghosts uh, have been known to attack. During World War I, the price of dye skyrocketed, and two migrant brothers, having just moved to Shanghai in hopes of starting a better life, ended up striking it rich when they happened across a large warehouse full of paint cans. They became overnight millionaires, and with their newfound wealth, they constructed two mansions in the heart of Shanghai. They also purchased a number of animals, tigers, peacocks, crocodiles, and for a while the brothers were living it big, but at some point they just vanished. Some say they were eaten by one of their pets, but nobody knows for sure. Their mansions fell into disrepair and their animals were sold off or eaten. One of the mansions ended up being demolished, the other was moved in the 2000s, and it was at this time that stories started coming out about construction workers rushing into the nearby hospital with bite marks, claiming to have been bitten by wild animals. They had very real bite marks, but no animals were ever found on the grounds. 
very spooky. Next up is Dead Fangmen Village. The Dead Fangmen Village in the outskirts of Chinyang City has a very ominous reputation. It's often dubbed as a ghost village. For starters, because nobody lives there anymore, but that's not the only reason. The ghost village is surrounded by majestic mountains with a tranquil river flowing nearby. What's left of the village are the remnants of 39 buildings with over 200 rooms built in the architectural styles of China's Ming and Qing dynasties. It sounds pretty picturesque, but there are some pretty creepy stories about this area. First, there's the tale of the wooden armchair. Right in the middle of the village sits a small wooden chair, and legend has it that anyone who takes a seat on it meets a mysterious and untimely death. Then there's the story of a hiker who would often camp along the nearby river, and this story is really uh, kind of creepy. One night, he decided he'd play a little, you know, harmless prank on his friends. He ventured towards the village and called out his friends' names into the darkness, trying to freak them out. But he didn't expect to hear what he heard next. It was an unfamiliar voice. But not only did he not recognize the voice, it also just didn't sound human. Not quite, anyway. And it was too close. And the worst part was, the gloomy voice was calling out his name. China is home to one of the five famous death valleys of the world, the Gate of Hell and the Kunlun Mountains. Legend has it that anyone who ventures into the Death Valley never makes it out alive, and it's easy to see how that legend got started. The area really is dangerous. It's full of wildlife, some of it not too friendly to humans. The terrain is rugged and vast, and there's evidence of death everywhere. Tons of animal carcasses and bones litter the ground. There are also things that have been left behind by people who never made it out alive. It does look to have a desolate, hellish vibe about it. So why all this death surrounding the valley? Well, scientists checked it out and found something pretty strange. The valley has abnormally high levels of magnetism, and you know what that means? Lightning strikes. Lots of them. All right, you want to talk about some spooky looking places, look no further than the abandoned Fushan tunnels in Qingdao. These things look right out of a nightmare. So these tunnels were once used by German colonists who arrived in 1898. During World War II though, they were repurposed by the Japanese as underground fortifications and storage facilities. And today, the Fushan tunnels are still there, shadowy labyrinths beneath the earth. They look like bunkers built for the apocalypse. Oppressive, dark, and isolating. It's said to be incredibly eerie exploring these tunnels. The air is cold and clammy. The walls are damp. And obviously, it's dark. It's the perfect atmosphere for a ghost story. It's easy to imagine the ghosts of soldiers peeking out from the shadows, and that's not even to mention the very real danger of running into very real and very living sketchy people who could be hiding in these tunnels. Next on the list, we have another ghost town, Ho Tu Wan. Ho Tu Wan really is like a scene from a post-apocalyptic movie set. It sits on Shengshan Island, just a stone's throw away from Shanghai. It's an abandoned fishing village and one of the best examples I've ever seen of nature just reclaiming a place. It's actually kind of beautiful. Once upon a time, Ho Tu Wan was a bustling village full of fishermen and their families, but as time passed and economic opportunities shifted, residents started to leave, leaving behind their homes, schools, even some personal belongings. Most of the village still stands today. Only the buildings are engulfed by greenery. Nature has really taken over here. Everything is covered with vines and foliage that wind their way around the decaying homes and buildings. Just like with any ghost town, it's definitely eerie, but it's also become a bit of a tourist hotspot. Photographers and urban explorers come to the place a lot, and I can definitely see why. It has this surreal beauty to it. The Wuhan Yangtze River Bridge, like with many old bridges, has a storied past, and it has its own ghostly legend. The bridge is said to be haunted by a ghostly lady in white who met a heart-wrenching fate on this bridge. As the story goes, she was deeply in love with her partner, but when her lover left her, she became so overcome with grief and despair that she decided to take her own life. By leaping from the bridge 
into the dark waters below. Since then, it's said that her tormented spirit still roams the bridge, clad in a flowing white gown. Some claim to have seen a crying woman wandering along the bridge at night. One story goes that a man was driving along the bridge late at night. He saw a woman walking along, along the bridge in the distance, but even from far away, he could hear her wailing. He drove up and pulled over, rolled down his window to ask her if she needed any help. But when the woman turned to face him, he hit the gas and flew out of there. Her eyes were bloodshot and hate-filled, and she began rushing towards the car. As the man drove off, he was almost too scared to look back in his side mirror, but when he did, the woman had vanished. We have the city of Shengde, which is home to one of the most haunted hotels in China, the Yushan Fan Dian Hotel. So this hotel looking over the Yangtze River is said to be haunted by all sorts of eerie spirits and ghosts. Legend has it that the hotel was built on cursed grounds, where restless souls wander aimlessly. Guests who have stayed here report hearing strange noises, seeing mysterious shadows, and feeling an eerie presence lurking in the hallways. One of the most famous stories revolves around a tragic love affair that ended in heartbreak and death, and it's said that the spirits of these lovers still roam the hotel, searching for each other in the afterlife. It's also believed that Empress Dowager Zerzi from the Qing dynasties haunts this place, keeping an eye on her former gardens and occasionally showing up on the eighth floor. And we're finishing off the list with the city of Nanjing. So Nanjing was the site of one of the worst atrocities in recent history. The Nanjing was a horrific event that occurred during World War II in the Chinese city of Nanjing. Japanese forces invaded in 1937, and not only were there mass killings, but many were brutalized and tormented. There was also looting and destruction of property. The civilian population, including women, the young, and the elderly, suffered at the hands of the invading troops. The exact number of casualties is still debated, but it's estimated that hundreds of thousands of people were killed, and many more were subjected to unspeakable acts of violence. It's one of the darkest chapters in China and Japan's history, and the remnants of that event are still said to be felt here to this very day. And it makes sense. In the grand scheme of things, 1937, really not that long ago. With all that said though, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video. And I really hope I pronounced things somewhat okay. Um, I did my best, guys. All right, catch you next time. We're gonna finish off the list with the Wuhan Yangtze River Bridge. That wasn't the last one. Editor, make sure to take out the little part where I say this is the last one.